Hello students, from now onwards we will be doing microeconomics. The chapters which we will be discussing going forward will be introduction and definition of economics, nature, scope and importance of economics, branches of economics, economic systems, elementary theory of demand, elasticity of demand, consumers equilibrium, production, elementary theory of supply, equilibrium analysis, producers equilibrium, forms of business organizations, concepts of revenue and cost, forms of market, equilibrium of a firm and industry under different market forms. It is said that nothing is older than yesterday's newspaper and the same can be said of yesterday's economic statistics. Economics is the study of how people make choices under conditions of scarcity and of the results of those choices for the society. Human behavior can be analyzed economically by taking the assumption that people are rational. It implies that they have defined goals and try to achieve those goals with the help of resources which are available to them. In doing so, they face trade-offs because the resources are limited. Simply stating, trade-offs are the choices made by a person and choice involves compromise between competing interests. It is called scarcity principle. As Scarcity makes the trade-off necessary. It is also known as no free lunch principle. Generally, it is reasonable to predict that if the benefit of an action goes up, people will take an action. And conversely, if the cost of the action goes up, they are less likely to take that action. This behavior can be termed as incentive principle. It stresses that the relevant costs and benefits usually help to predict the behavior of the people, but it does not insist that people will behave rationally in each instance. Economics is often regarded as the queen of social sciences. At a starting point, it is essential and appropriate to first know what economics is about or what is the subject matter of economics. It seeks to explain systematically a large variety of questions pertaining to economic behavior of individuals, society and the economy. Being individuals living in a society, we face economic questions in our daily life. How do our parents decide how to spend their income on the purchase of various goods and services? How are the wages in the economy determined? What determines the level of national income? Why is India facing the problem of unemployment? Why is China able to achieve a higher rate of economic growth than India? Why has the Indian government followed the policy of privatization, liberalization and globalization? Economists try to throw light on such questions and such questions give us an idea about the subject matter of economics. It also makes us understand why economics has assumed a place of unprecedented importance in recent years because it deals with economic questions that concern us as an individual or as citizens of a society. Economics helps to develop the principles, theories or models for different economic events. The term economics was originally derived from two Greek words, oikis which means household and nemen which means management. Thus it refers to managing of a household using the limited funds. Earlier writers, the classical and the non-classical economists developed it into political economy. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle, who is regarded by some writers as the first economist, used the terms as management of household and the state. 
His ideas of money are contained in his famous book, The Ethics and the Politics. During the ancient and medieval times, economics developed as a science of statecraft. The mercantilists, the advocates of economic thought, which prevailed between the 16th and mid-18th centuries, believed that wealth was of paramount importance as a means to make a powerful state. However, economics as a subject emerged scientifically in the year 1776 when Adam Smith, for the first time in his book, Wealth of Nations, defined economics as a social science. Due to this, he is regarded as the father of economics. Indian statesman Kautilya, or Chanakya as we commonly know him, used the terms both for political and economic activity. His earth shast was considered to be a combination of economics, political science and jurisprudence. Economics emerged as a separate discipline for the first time in the writings of classical economists. However, it was Dr. Alfred Marshall who in 1890 used the term economics for the first time in his famous book named Principles of Economics. It means the study of business affairs in general. Due to the changing nature of the functions of the state, changes in the size and nature of modern technology and production, increasing awareness towards economic development and social welfare, an increase in the efforts for raising the standards of living, uh, the, nat um, the, uh, the, na the nature and functions of all social sciences like economics have undergone basic and vast changes. Therefore, corresponding to these developments, economics has been defined in different ways uh, at various points of time by different economists. Broadly speaking, the definitions of economics as given by different economists can be classified into four main groups. The wealth definition, welfare definition, scarcity definition and growth definition. Let us first take the wealth definition. The credit for defining economics as a subject for the first time goes to Adam Smith. He is considered as the father of economics and in his book An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nations, he defined economics as a science which inquires into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. He emphasized the production and growth of wealth as the subject matter of economics. Thus, all the classical economists regarded economics as a science of wealth, but this definition was bitterly criticized as in 17th and 18th centuries, anything which was connected with wealth and riches was looked upon as sordid and mean. Many thinkers of that time, like Thomas Carlyle and John Ruskin, described it as the science of bread and butter, gospel of mammon, a dismal science, a pig science, etc. They allege that classical economists have ignored the higher values of life in uh, such as happiness, love and affection. The wealth definition was criticized. It was uh, really um, uh, bitterly um, criticized because it was considered to be a science of bread and butter, gospel of mammon, a dismal sign. They, the classical economists, they have ignored uh, the uh, higher values of life, such as happiness, love and affection. Another criticism that rose against the classical economists was that they defined wealth in a very narrow and restricted sense. Wealth was considered as consisting of material or tangible goods and excluded all non-material goods and services. Thus, they did not recognize the importance of immaterial things like health, education, 
good administration etc for the economic growth of the nation or for the expansion of material wealth the classical economists gave undue importance to wealth but ignored human welfare in fact wealth is only a means to an end and the end is the welfare of man and society dr alfred marshall was inspired by the thoughts that human welfare is more important than accumulation of wealth wealth for its own sake is of no use but when a man uses it it gains importance we now move on to the welfare definition in the later part of 19th century the economists started realizing the human character present in economics it was thought that wealth is only a means to an end the end being human welfare alfred marshall in his book principles of economics which was published in 1890 gave the welfare definition of economics he defined economics as political economy or economics is the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life it examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of material requisites of well being thus it is on one side a study of wealth and on the other and more important side a part of study of man Alfred Marshall this definition covers the welfare aspect of human beings that like it examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of material requisites of well being in this definition uh, marshall has emphasized that it only examines that part of an individual and social action which helps in getting wealth and using that material uh, for uh, well being of a person so anything which a person is getting in uh, terms of wealth money whatever that is uh, that is the aspect which economics will study so it is studying on one side a study of wealth and it is also on another side a study of mankind marshall definition was also criticized by other economists on various grounds uh, the marshall definition emphasized primarily on the study of mankind and it considered wealth as only a secondary thing as it provides the means for existence comfort and enjoyment secondly according to marshall economics is the study of ordinary business of life that is how a person is earning the income and how he is spending it economics is concerned with only one aspect of a man's life that is how he is earning his livelihood and what he is doing with the money he is getting it ignores the other social religious or political aspects of a man's life thirdly marshall emphasized on material welfare as the primary concern of economics that is that part of human welfare which is related to wealth thus it is not considered concerned with the total human welfare but only that part which relates to wealth the definitions of uh, marshall and pigou were generally and widely accepted but they have been severely criticized by professor lionel robbins on various grounds according to robbins economics is not a social science but a human science a social science studies the activities of individuals living in organized com communities as members of the society whereas a human science studies the individuals whether they are living in a society or in isolation 
according to welfare definition the activities of an isolated individual like robinson crusoe like lie outside the orbit of economics thereby limiting the scope of economics welfare is a subjective thing and it differs according to time place and individual according to robbins economics is not at all concerned with welfare it studies the problems that have arisen from the scarcity of resources and uh, that help in the production of goods goods like liquor cigarettes guns etc do not promote human welfare but their production constitutes economic activity therefore in economics we study all those goods which command a price in the market whether they promote welfare or not lastly the distinction between economic and non economic activities is invalid according to robbins all human activities have an economic aspect therefore the classification of activities into economic and non economic is not correct and proper moreover welfare is composite and it is very difficult to separate material welfare from the total welfare robbins not only criticized marshall's definition and other welfare definitions of economics but also provided a new definition which he considered to be more scientific and correct he has given the definition in his famous book an essay on the nature and significance of economic science which he brought out in 1931 according to him economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses thus according to robbins wants are unlimited but the means to satisfy them are limited and these can be put to alternative uses thus robbins definition brings out mainly uh, the features like unlimited wants or unlimited ends it means that our wants or ends are unlimited and tend to multiply over time one cannot satisfy all the wants therefore one has to choose the most urgent want for their immediate satisfaction the means which are there to satisfy the wants are the various productive resources such as land labor capital which are needed for the production activities for the satisfaction of human wants means or resources are said to be scarce because their supply is limited as compared to their demand land is limited by the area of a country labor is limited by the size and composition of the population and capital is limited by the amount of savings in the country thus all wants cannot be satisfied hence one has to decide which want can be satisfied and which should be left unsatisfied not only the means are scarce but they can also be put to a number of uses for example a piece of land can be used in factories in running railways and in thermal stations for electricity generation and also by individual households therefore the problem of allocation of resources also arises as we must decide how to use them economically as the wants are numerous and the means are scarce we have to choose the most urgent wants and leave the other wants which can be satisfied later on scarcity of means makes choice necessary and because of this economics is called science of choice robbins definition is widely accepted by the economists in view of its superiority over the earlier definition it brings out the real cause of economic problems and emphasizes the universal nature of the subject which is applicable everywhere and at all times he included in the scope of economics all those activities which come under the cover of choice making whether performed by people living in the society or outside it although robbins definition is considered logical yet it uh, has also been criticized by certain other economists 
like Wooten, Durbin, Fraser on various grounds. Robbins considered economics as neutral between ends. That is, economics has nothing to do with the good or bad nature of the end. On the other hand, he considers economics as a science of choice. Many economists feel that they have to tell what is good or bad about certain choices and economics is considered not only a positive but also a normative science. Robbins restricted the subject matter of economics by reducing it to the theory of resource allocation and ignored the macro aspect of economics, that is, the problems of economic development and growth. In the modern world, the significance of macroeconomics has thus increased. Economic problems also originate from factors other than scarcity, which is ignored by Robbins. The Great Depression of 1929-33 to 33 has proved that economic problems may also arise due to abundance. It was the problem of abundance of goods in USA that created a big problem to the world over. Thus, this definition does not apply to rich countries where economic problems arise due to high incomes and not due to scarcity. In the same manner, in underdeveloped economies like India, the problem of unemployment exists due to abundance of manpower. This aspect has been totally ignored by Robbins. According to Professor Morris Dobb, Robbins' definition of economics does not apply to socialist countries, where the economic activities are subject to governmental control and regulation. In these countries, the government chooses between the ends and the means. Therefore, the individual choice has no relevance in such a case. Robbins has treated economics as a science only. He viewed economics as a science of value determination and choice making. But many economists consider economics as a social science and it should study the problem of choice when it has a social aspect. That is, when an individual's choice affects the other members of the society. Kessling's definition is concerned with the positive aspect of the subject, that is, of analyzing the problems arising out of scarcity. But it is now considered that economics is much more than merely a theory of resource allocation. Modern economists, notably Nobel laureate Professor Samuelson, have defined economics from the point of economic growth. According to Samuelson, economics is the study of how people and society choose, with or without the use of money, to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternative uses, to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in the future among various people and groups of society. According to Keynes, economics is the study of the administration of scarce resources and of the determinants of income and employment. Samuelson's definition incorporates the essence of material welfare and also talks of future consumption and economic growth. In the modern world, the basis of definition of economics should be to promote maximum satisfaction, human welfare and economic growth allocating the resources having alternative uses. Samuelson's definition brings out certain features. Like Robbins, Samuelson also emphasized on the problem of choice, which arises due to scarcity of resources and unlimited wants. He also emphasized on proper efficient allocation of resources for satisfaction of maximum wants. The problem of scarcity of resources is not only confined to the present but also to the future. Wants grow and multiply over time. Thus, effort should not only be made to allocate the resources properly but also effort should be made to increase them over time. The expansion and growth of resources is also considered by this definition. Samuelson 
has widened the subject matter of economics. He has explained that economics is concerned with determining the pattern of employment of scarce resources to produce goods over time. Thus, it studies the economic problems not just at a point of time but over a period of time. It considers the pattern of consumption in the future also, providing a dynamic approach to the study of economics. Samuelson has emphasized that the problem of resource allocation is universal in case of both barter economy and the money using exchange economy. The subject matter of economics has grown widely and it is not possible to give a precise definition of economics for all times to come. The boundaries of economics have been ever expanding. Therefore, the modern economists have stopped giving any precise definition of economics. They are of the view that economics can be better explained by pointing out the various questions with which the economists are concerned. In the words of Jacob Binner, economics is what economists do.